Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are in the world right now. Um, I want to say welcome to the Global Ascension Summit on day three. Uh, we hope you're all enjoying the summit so far and we're really excited to kick off the third day today. Once you jump on, just, just let us know you're here, say hello. Um, my name is Richard McKieseldeck. I'm an Ascension Guide, a mentor, a light language DNA activator, and also founder or co-founder of the Starseed School. And I'm here with my amazing sacred partner. Hi everyone, I'm Jessica Rosalie. I'm so honored to be here and I'm so excited to bring an activation for you all today. And I'm so grateful to Catherine for organizing all of this. Yeah, and we invite you to check out StarseedChangeInTheWorld.com and TheRainbowGoddess.com as well as our YouTube channels or our Facebook groups. Um, and I just really want to invite you all to just take a moment. Hi, Kara. Hi, Yvonne. And hi, Saffron. Hi, Tim. Tim, I'm glad you found this through my YouTube channel. And I just want to uh, honor all of you into this, this moment as we start to speak about sacred relationships. So one of the first things we're going to speak about today on sacred relationships is how to identify your twin. Hi, Barbara. How are you? Thank you for joining. And this is one of the biggest things with us being able to identify our twin flame, our sacred relationship, our higher soul divine unions. For this to occur and for it to occur in a way that you are able to identify, it all goes down to really doing your own inner work. Uh, once you start to clear a lot of like the conditioning and traumas and you've come into a frequency of self-love, you're able to identify that self-love, your own soul spark, your own divine aspects of you within another person. So what happens is if you were to connect and you haven't done a large majority of your own personal kind of like clearing and inner work, there may be distortions that are coming up within your field that are not allowing you to see purely for what it necessarily is. Because if you can't recognize love within yourself and you can't recognize yourself as a soul, then it's, if, you, if you can't recognize it within yourself, it's always harder to recognize it in somebody else. So it's that level of honoring within yourself and once you have reached that level of honor and sacredness in yourself, that union from within yourself it's easier for you to recognize your sacred partner. So it's symptoms. This is something we get asked about all of the time. And once you start connecting with your twin flame or your sacred union, there's a lot of physical, emotional, uh, mental and spiritual symptoms that start to occur. And this can be from uh, having dreams, with the, the sacred partner coming into dreams, uh, speaking to you on a higher self level, you can start going through a merging process in the higher self before you've even come together. So for myself and with Jessica, this started for me like close to, I wanna say, you know, it was a, quite a long time ago where there was a higher self level communication before we were able to figure out and put all the pieces together on a physical level. Physical symptoms are you can feel like a level of euphoria through your body, your chakra systems light up and you come into a level of like pure bliss. And it's so overwhelming, this level of feeling of like home uh, where it'll trigger your emotions, it will make you want to cry almost instantaneously at the beauty you're recognizing in the other person. Because it's like looking at yourself and recognizing yourself almost for the first time as well. And feeling that down like deeply to your core resonance. And when that person recognizes you back, it's like the first time you've ever been seen in your life, like you feel home. 
So and through this process, like there's lots of physical sensations, emotional sensations, etheric sensations that start to occur. You, and then through this, we start to go through merging of our bodies. Like you go through a merging of the mental body. So a lot of thoughts come up. Um, and then you go through a merging of the emotional body. So a lot of emotions come up. And then you go through a merging of the spiritual bodies. And then this is when we start getting into like the different levels of sacred unions. Yeah, and I just really want to add to that, that this journey, the twin flame journey, it's really first about your own discovery of like who you are as a soul. So it really isn't about like finding your other half that mm. completes you. I feel like that's like a misconception that we see in the media that this person is going to make me whole. I think we make each other better. We amplify what's already within us. But really, I feel like before you meet your sacred partner or your twin flame, there's like a, a preparation period that you go through. And oftentimes, you kind of go through like a period of like sort of releasing everything that really isn't in alignment with your true like soul essence. So things in your life start to shed and fall away as you like go through the layers of distortions and layers of conditioning that you have sort of taken on throughout your life. So it really is sort of like you're becoming this butterfly, you're going through like this cocoon stage. And you know, it can be even like a period of like isolation where you know, you're just really by yourself for a while and you're like, who am I? What is it that I want in this world? What is it that I really want to achieve? What is it that I love? And when you go through this period of self-love, of self-discovery, of who it is you truly are, that is when you're able to recognize your twin, your sacred partner, because you love yourself already and you know who you are as a soul. So you're able, you're more able to recognize that in another person, which is what Richard was saying. But it's just, it's really such a beautiful process and it's empowering. You know, the relationship in itself isn't meant to take away from anything. It's really meant to put you onto your highest path as well as to amplify your gifts, your abilities, and to really make you stronger as a person. It's like two amazing people coming together with the same love and the same mission and the same desires to help humanity grow and change and saying, hey, let's do this together and really being there to support one another. And what's really beautiful about the journey is that you know you each possess your own gifts and abilities that make you 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 like I am still my own person and I possess all of the things that make me me and Richard has his own unique gifts and abilities that make him him and when we come together it really is like the perfect complement to that energy it really is like the merging of like the embodied divine masculine and divine feminine and part of the stages of coming together is at first there's that like literally like heaven on earth i've been searching for you that peace that i've been looking for like you're here and you go through that like phase where you feel like your own like you're in your own like little bubble and mm -hmm. you kind of forget about the world for a while as it takes time to like adjust to like the higher frequencies and the, the amount of unconditional love that can be shared between you and your sacred partner. It's just the absolute, it's like the most beautiful experience um, that I've ever experienced. And it truly is like, you don't really understand it until you experience it. So I think our next point, we'll just quickly touch base on codependency and expectations on relationships so one of the things that we have learned through our own uh, realization and methods is the less expectations and attachments you can put on each other during the evolution of a relationship is the more the relationship is able to grow develop into something pure and something sacred there's a we've been kind of conditioned or programmed to say, I'm gonna do this, and uh, but I expect you to do this. 
and we put a level of expectations on our partnerships right from the beginning. This is where I see us being in a year. This is where I see us being in five years, where what it's really about is showing up for your partner and being in full service to your partner, full service to yourself and allowing that to kind of like come through in the most natural way and being honest with yourself. Am I putting expectations and attachments on my partner of what I expect them to be like? Mm -hmm. Because ideally, the two of you want to be able to grow individually and grow together. And when you grow together and grow individually, you start to blossom into a highly conscious uh, relationship that has so much deep spiritual, emotional, physical meaning to it. And of all, I would say a very high level of emotional intelligence, which is also a key aspect of being able to navigate the twin flame sacred union journey. Uh, so codependency, expectations, one of the main things to really watch of what we're placing on each other. Do you want to explain surviving and thriving in the twin flame experience? Yeah, so I feel like it's very, very much like ascension. It mirrors ascension, your relationship in some ways, where some days you're in that euphoric, amazing bubble of just love. But we all know that, you know, we can't always maintain that because we have to continue to release and let go of things that are no longer aligned with us. And so, you know, we go through periods within our relationship where we're, you know, releasing old wounds, old patterns. And some days it's like you're really feeling that sort of con contracted state within your union that you're like so much is coming up because literally when you're in this relationship, the other person assists you and supports you and also pulls out of you anything that is not aligned for your highest. So it really is about growth. And it really is about embodying the highest version of yourself. And something that I have truly learned so far on this experience is that really taking accountability for your own energy and realizing that your partner is really just mirroring back to you what it is that's within you any emotions that are coming up that you personally need to deal with. And so it can be such a beautiful experience together to have this level of unconditional love from your partner just supporting you through everything and just holding space for you and recognizing that you're having a day that you just need to release or cry or do whatever it is that you need to do to get rid of vibrations and frequencies within you that just aren't aligned with this higher vibrational conscious relationship and you know in some ways less um, awakened individuals if they meet their twins they may just start having conflict with one another because they don't understand what is really occurring mm -hmm. and it's not that this person is causing this pain it's actually that they're helping you to see it so that you can release it and let go of it so it really is about just embodying the highest and best version of yourself. And once you can identify this, you can start to celebrate your victories and you can celebrate the days when you're like, hey, you know, remember yesterday and I was going through so much and then today, literally, it's like you're back in that euphoric state and it's sometimes can be like, what is even happening? But you know it's for your highest because as soon as you come out of that contracted state, you feel like a level of love and expansion that you've never felt before. So it really is truly like you're just clearing so much within your heart to make room for them. So every time something comes up for you that makes you sad or depressed or you feel grief, it really is just clearing out the space within you so that you can love your partner and hold even more love for them, which is when you think about it that way, so beautiful and so worth going through all of these ups and downs and roller coasters that we often experience in our relationships. Yeah, and just to touch base a little more on that, uh, emotional intelligence is one of the biggest keys to being able to navigate through like the twin flame experience and having that level of emotional communication with each other and that understanding. 
um, if you do not have an emotional maturity and you are going through a twin flame experience, it will be a very highly charged and a lot of confusion and not really understanding why things are occurring or happening. So this is why a lot, most of the time, twin flame unions come through once we are more awakened. Um, so understanding sacred relationships, like why are twin flames coming together? The reason twin flames are coming together, especially, you know, where I call ascension twins, is we're coming together like during this time of ascension to anchor unity consciousness. When two come together that have recognized wholeness, union within themselves, within their masculine and feminine aspects and a wholeness within themselves and then come together in a union, it creates a third energy, like a trinity energy. And that trinity energy is literally unity consciousness, which is being experienced between two. So by us, having that like third energy present and anchoring that in, it's doing a very powerful, um, powerful role for Ascension for all of uh, everybody on Earth right now. So anyone that's in a sacred union or twin flame experience is know the level of purity and ability to be able to really make a difference just by holding your energy and by holding your relationships and understanding how sacred that is in this experience is sacred is not everybody gets to go through a twin flame journey. So if you are on a twin flame journey or you were experiencing one or want one to come in for you, you know, it really has to have the whole process treated as sacred all along. So that's when we really have to look at everything we do and how uh, hi Vivian, hi Tina, hi Catherine, hi Chloe, so saying hi quickly to everyone, Gabriella, Estrella, hi Henna, hi Ashling. Um, so, you wanna? Yeah, yeah, so it it really is about honoring the journey, honoring the process, and recognizing how sacred it is, because it's important that you really hold that level of honor for your partner because what you're doing is so powerful and you want to make sure that you maintain that sacredness within your union so that you can anchor in this higher frequency energy. You know, and like I said, that doesn't mean you're not going to have your ups and downs, but it's about, you know, honoring that person and, and showing that love and knowing that you know you have someone beside you who supports you and loves you and wants to be there to truly empower you and also bring in this beautiful sacred mission that you both have and i think that's the one thing that is maybe not as talked about as much within twin flame unions is that yes there's this beautiful undeniable love but truly what brought most or what brings most twins together is this shared desire to help change the world to truly anchor in new earth to truly be the best versions of themselves so that they can help others and serve and just bring in so much love and so much light mm -hmm. and so you know you've met your twin when literally you feel like your desires and dreams are aligned so you will notice that you when you talk you'll make a list of things that you want to achieve in this world and things that you care so deeply about, like on a heart level, like we're not talking like 3D material. We're talking about what it is that truly is within your heart, what it is that you truly want to do. And that's why it takes a level of knowing yourself, right? So once you unveil what it is that your, your mission is, what it is that you want to do, then you two can come together and you can begin to make this into reality like truly bring in and anchor in ascension. And so this is happening all over the world. You know, sacred relationships are coming together to anchor in these beautiful high vibrational frequencies of love, of pure love, mm -hmm. love that we are not used to seeing in the movies and on TV and things that we're taught because this is a love that comes from self-love. And so it's super, it's so powerful and so beautiful and it's 
it's it's a blessing to be able to have someone there who supports you and wants to bring your dreams into reality as well. So just before we do our activations for all of you, I want to just run you through a quick exercise in how to create a holographic imprint. So if you look in the group today, uh, hi Renee, how are you? If you look at, hi uh, Helen, how are you? So if you look in the group, I posted a divine sacred partner decree. This is something I wrote when I was having a higher self communication with my sacred partner, which was Jessica. And before I knew it was Jessica, but I wanted to bring this experience more into like the physical aspect. So to create a holographic imprint of this experience to assist in the process, what you do is you create a sacred space. You get out your utensils, like your, your pens, your paper, your whatever it is you're going to do, whether if you want to do it through a painting or whether you want to write, you know, a letter to your twin flame, you bless the whole experience as sacred. So like, I mean, you bless your pencils as sacred, your paper, you set your space, and then you focus on like a level of conscious intention through your heart like a heart-based intention. And then with that intention, you write your letter with the intention to create a holographic imprint of your message. So this is a good exercise you can do for wanting to connect with your sacred partners. And then it's something you can kind of like read to re further kind of integrate that as well. There's so much beautiful soul family on this call. I love all of you. Uh, hello, Nubia. Uh, we're so excited that you're all on here, um, or many of you are, many will watch this after. So I want you to practice or create, not practice, but create, create a holographic imprint of your heart-based intentions through the, setting your own sacred space. It's 1222, so we get a few minutes to do a twin flame activation for all of you. So I invite you all to take a deep breath in and breathe out as we just start to set the space with our councils of light. For the highest of all, setting the intention for all twin flame activation codes to come through this light language sequencing. And as these codes are coming through, it's really important for you to focus on your heart to feel that love that's within you and just feel your heart opening just simply by um, setting the intention for it to do so and just allow yourself to relax and receive. あら野山かやしきあとらもたりきすきやなかにけたらよのとりやすかたらにきしかたらのととととあの野山かやきやこあのたりやまたりすきやこたりやのかみきしかたらのらのやまてやかうなもからにきしかたらもたりやまきすき
alla noia muatale aniki ula noto alla noia makaya shikotoro yeshikoto ushka muakaya iniki kiki ya kukuku ya maka and on a soul level if you're ready to call in your highest soul union your highest divine partner for your highest soul purpose your highest soul mission will align with the organic ascension you can just Feel that intention as a yes within your heart. We ask for this to be bridged in the most divine, sovereign way for each one of you. こうしやっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけっけ
Yeah, and next up we have uh, Gina Locke, who's releasing Limiting Beliefs. <laughs> so that sounds like it's going to be amazing. We all need help uh, releasing Limiting Beliefs, so please <laughs> check her out. Uh, we send you all so much love and gratitude. Mm. Sending you all so much love from our hearts to yours. Bye, everybody. Bye.